Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at how to create a C++ random number generator. Now random numbers are used quite a bit in gaming as well as in regular C++ programs for mixing things up. Now the C++ library has a random number generator and it produces a number that appears to be completely random. And we use the rand function and it will give us a random integer between 0 and a constant value called rand max, which is generally the largest int value available in C++. So it's going to be between 0 and 32,767. So let's see how we can begin to implement this in a basic program. So first of all, we're going to generate a random secret number. So I'm going to need a variable for that. So I'm just going to use this as an int, and I'm going to call it secret number. And I'm going to start it equal to 0. Now if we're going to use the rand function, we need to include a separate header file. And for this, this is the C standard library. And now we can set our secret number. So we'll say secret number is equal to the rand function. And let's just do a C out statement to see what happens when we do that. So let me run this. And here's the output. We have 16807. So let me run this again. And you'll see we got the same number again, 16807. And if I run it again, you'll see that we're still getting the same value over and over again. So it is a random number, but the problem is it's the same random number every single time we run it. So the rand function uses a seed to control how to generate numbers, and the default is 1. So since it's always the same number each time, our random number is going to be the same each time. So if we're able to change the seed to produce a random number, if we use something that is in itself random, then we can generate a truly random number. So the technique that's used for that is the current time. So it's going to grab the current time each time the program runs, and it's going to return the number of time in seconds since time began January 1st, 1970. Greenwich Mean Time. So it's going to count the number of seconds since then, so it's always going to be a different value. So 12 o'clock today will be different values than 12 o'clock tomorrow because it's the number of seconds that have elapsed since January 1st, 1970. So how do we implement that? First of all, we need to add another header for being able to use the time function. So I'm going to include the C time header library. And then before we set our secret number here, I'm going to say srand, which is the function for seeding a random number. And what are we going to seed it with? We're going to seed it with the current time. So now let's see if, if that has an impact on our output. Here's our random number. Let me run that again. So we are getting different values in here each time it's running. Some pretty big numbers here. And also my program is showing up with a, a type conversion mismatch. So we'll look at that in a second too. So this warning message isn't preventing this from generating a random number each time we run it. But let's take a look. It's an unsigned integer which means that we possibly could have a negative value for time. And realistically, we can't have a negative time value. So let's cr change time so that it is unsigned and time. And it should still run the same way. It's just that our warning message should go away. So yes, we're able to, to now generate a random number here. So those numbers are pretty big to deal with. 
So a lot of times what you end up doing is reducing this down in size. And that's often done with a modulus. So let me say, if I do a modulus of 100, and we'll run it now and see if we get some smaller numbers in here. So yes, we have 62, and then 90, So this is going to give us a number between 0 and 99. Now if I change this down even further to a 10, then this will give us values between 0 and 9. So if we're getting values between 0 and 9, we need to, if we're going to say, we wanted to get values between 1 and 10, then all we have to do in here is add 1 to it. So now we should get numbers. We'll have to try it a few different times, but we got up to 10 there. And you can keep testing it for a while just to see, but um, these should all be between 1 and 10 now. So that is some basic code and how to create a random number.